our elders were unfortunate. Muhammad ibn Tahir al maqdisi in one night would walk 17 farsa. One farsa is equivalent to around 5 kilometers. 17 times 5 equals 85 kilometers in one night. He would walk for the hadith of Rasulullah Abu Hatim says that the first time I left my house, I stayed absent for seven years, and I counted the miles that I'd walked, and I kept a record, and I kept on counting till I'd walked a thousand farsa, which equals to 5,000 kilometers. He says when I had walked over 5,000 kilometers, I stopped recording, I stopped counting. Baqi ibn Makhlid al-Andalusi left his home twice. The first time he left his home, he stayed away for 14 years. The second time he left his home, he stayed away for 20 years. A total of 34 years, within this period of 34 years, not once did Baqi ibn Makhlid ever ride on an animal. He walked continuously for 34 years, beginning at the age of 20, he walked all the way from Spain, walking, he made his way to Baghdad to meet the great Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal to acquire this noon from him. Wherever they believed this noon was there, whether it was just one mas'ala, whether there was just one sheikh to meet, they made it their aim and objective to meet this sheikh, to go to this place and to acquire the noon. There was no such thing as asking the teachers for ishara. There was no such thing as only learning those pieces that we believe that were going to come into the Salana Imtihan or the Sahmai Imtihan or Sheshmai Imtihan. The aim and objective was to acquire all this noor so that they can benefit the believers. The aim and objective was to become a master so that they can benefit the Muslim and so that they can benefit mankind. Imam Makhul of Dimishki, he was a slave woman belonging to the tribe of Banu Huzair. He said, when she freed me, I did not leave Misr till I had acquired all the knowledge of Misr. ثم أذيت الحجاز فما قرشت منها وبها علم إلا حويت عليها فيما أراء I came to Hijaz and I acquired all the knowledge of Hijaz. I came to Iraq and I acquired all the knowledge of Iraq. They became such masters, such masters that they could claim and they could challenge كمن أغرض عليها حديثا صحيحا مصندا فَلَهُ عَلَيَّ دِرْحَمٌ يَتَفَقُّقْ بِهِ They could make these challenges. Abu Hatim made this challenge and he made this challenge outside the door of Abu Walid al-Tayyaliki. He is making this challenge. He says hundreds have gathered. Abu Hatim and the, Abu, Abu Zu'a and the works are there. He says they have gathered. My intention was not of challenges. My intention was that these masters would gather and they will relate a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which I Abu Hatim do not know. He says they gather. فَلَمْ يَتَحَيَّا لِأَحَدٍ أَنْ يُغْرِبَ عَلَيَّ حَدِيثًا No one was able to come out with a hadith which I Abu Hatim did not know. When Imam Bukhari returned to Samarqam, 400 masters have gathered and they changed the hadith. They mixed the chains, the chain of Sham into Iraq, the chains of Sham into Iraq. 400 masters and they are testing the great Imam al-Bukhari and they are testing him continuously for nine days. Questions are coming from all directions. Not once are they able to take a mistake of the great Imam al-Bukhari. The great master Yahya ibn Ma'in put Abu Na'im to a similar test. Not once was Yahya ibn Ma'in able to take a single mistake as Abu Na'im. Such masters they became the Hafiz ibn Manda when he, re- when he returned from his journey it is related that 40 beasts were required just to pick up his books. The great master Yahya ibn Ma'in acquired such knowledge that he himself writes that that I have written with my very own hands one million hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu wasallam. He spent one million fifty thousand for the sake of a hadith and he has written with his very own hands one million hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu wasallam. Ibn al-Jawzi became such a master that Ibn al-Jawzi himself on the member said كتبت بأصبعي ألفي مجلد وتاب على يدي مئة ألف وأسلم على يدي إشرون ألف They have written with my very own hands 2,000 مجلد A hundred thousand people have repented of my hands and 20,000 have embraced Islam on my hands Ibn Shaheen became such a master that he wrote 330 books Just his tafsir was in a thousand juz His Muslim was in 1,500 just. Ibn Abi Sunya left a thousand words. Ibn Hazm wrote 400 volumes which equals 80,000 pages. Hafiz Abu Abdullah al-Hakim 
wrote 1500 just. The great master Ibn al-Arabi, just his tafsir al-Quran and war al-Fajr, it is said that it consists of 80,000 pages. Just his tafsir, 80,000 pages. Imam Tabari, when, his, when he died, his students worked out the days he lived in this world. From the day he was valid to the day he died. And then they divided this number with the pages that he had written and he worked out 14 pages a day. Imam Tabari remained alive for 86 years. Say he was valid for four, at the age of 14. That makes it 72 years from the day he was valid to the day he died. 14, 72 times 365 days a year times 14. It is over 300,000, over 300,000 pages that he has written in a lifetime. Every word a gem, every word a pearl. The second thing our, ma- our Salaf al-Salihim did was, they made sure that they have really acquired this knowledge. And the third thing our elders did was, they did not restrict themselves to just ulum ad as we call. Once they had acquired ulum ad and when there was a need to acquire the ulum ad not only did they acquire the ulum ad they marked the ulum ad to whom the discovery of the third lunar inequality has been wrongly distributed. Ten, year, ten centuries ahead of him. You will come across the name of Hassan, whose, whose treatise on optics served as a basis for the work of Kepler and Roger Baker. You will come across the name of the illustrious Ali ibn Yunus, who was the founder, who was the who was inventor of the pendulum and the sundial. And it was his work that replaced Ptolemy's work. Take mathematics and you will come across the name of Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi. It was they who invented algebra. The word algebra was taken from his thesis al-Jabr. And the word algorithm was taken from his name al-Khwarizmi. You will come across the name of Sabit ibn Jarrah who developed algebra and first realized its application to geometry. You will come across the name of Al-Batani, who was, who was the first to use the expressions psi and cosine. You will come across the name of Muhammad ibn Ahmad, who invented the sign for zero in 976, and it only came to, to be known by the West in the 13th century. Take physics, and as Mr. Humboldt says, that it is the Arabs that should be regarded as the founders of this work, of this science. Chemistry did not even exist as a science before the Muslims. It was the Muslims who discovered sulfuric acid, nitric acid, potassium, silver nitrate, processes like crystallization, distillation. And medicine, what to say about Ibn Sina? It was he who mastered medicine only at the age of 16 and would lecture in it. This was our elders. And the final thing our elders did was, it's once what we call today as graduation. There was no graduation in those days. Once they had acquired this new, they did not sit in their houses. The aim or objective after acquiring this new was to serve the Muslims. They served the Muslims and they fulfilled the need of the Muslims and fulfilled the need of the time. The great Imam Bukhari, when Imam Bukhari came, many works of hadith had already been written. Many masani had already been written. But all the books before Imam Bukhari were such that they consisted of authentic and non-authentic hadith. Imam Bukhari seeing that the need of the time was to compile a book only containing authentic hadith, 
celebrate this need and fulfill the need of the Muslims by compiling a book only containing authentic hadith. Today there are many needs. There are different needs. There, is diff- there are needs for imamat. There are needs for tabligh. There are needs for opening schools. There are needs for opening madaris. There is a need for opening makatib. There is a need for opening orphanages. There is a need for opening nursing homes. There are many different needs. And it is the responsibility of you and I to serve the Muslims and fulfill this need. Allah gave me the tawfiq to act upon what I've said and you also. Allah gave me the tawfiq to